welcome to section 4.6, Dictionaries, brought to you by Agionics. Dictionaries are unordered collections of items. So similar to a set, but there's a key difference here. Notice the word key. Each item within a dictionary is defined with a key and value pair. So sets are great when we're comparing one set to another. If you're looking to almost create what I would consider a directory, um, dictionaries are awesome for that because you can have the key and the value. So we can use a key to call on a specific value. They're optimized to retrieve values when the key is known. So again, I think about this is, for example, let's say you're looking at a salary list of employees here. If you know the employee's name, you can call the name and then figure out what that salary might be. This is another way to get email addresses, extensions. Um, for example, that would be in your company. You could go ahead and store a list of all the emails and extensions and anything else of just each person. So all those important characteristics you may use and just call it by using their name as the key. Now that we have a better understanding here with dictionaries and how they might be used, let's see what we can do when we get to coding and creating some. I'm going to go ahead and open up my Jupyter Notebook. I suggest you do the same. I'm going to use Section 4 just so it's all together, but we won't need any dependencies, so you could start a fresh one as well. For dictionaries, let's go ahead and take ourselves a little bit of notes here. So when we create a dictionary, we think about our squiggly brackets, and then the difference here is we have key 1. So key 1, and then it's paired with, oh, sorry. Go back in there, we can think of it being paired with value one. Now it doesn't necessarily have to be a string it's paired with, but in general, that might would look that way. Then we use a comma to separate, and maybe here I'm gonna say key two. So our keys are typically going to be some type of non-numerical value for a key, and then maybe my key two is a numerical value there of five. So these we can't sort like a list, so again, we have to know what our keys are. Let's go ahead and start building a dictionary. So I'm gonna go ahead and say my dict, and let's go ahead and create it here. So maybe I'm gonna say, I'm just gonna use the letter K1 instead of typing out the whole thing for key. We use a colon right after it there, and then maybe I wanna have my first value. Let's just use cat. And then I wanna have key two. So I'm gonna say K2, you could type key as well. I just like using the shorthand of it there. And maybe here I want the number five. So when I run it, We'll notice no errors. That's always a good thing. So now if we try to do this with indices based on how we've seen things before, if I say my dict zero, you'll notice it has a key error. So key error means like this doesn't exist. We can't reference a zero. Now if I happen to rename this as zero and I called it as such, so if I say zero, you're noticing though this was defined as a string. So if I want to pull it, I have to actually go ahead and call it a string. I'm going to go ahead and change that back though to K1. So I just wanted to demonstrate there that you could go ahead and change those to anything. But typically, if we think about this, this would be, I would use my keys as people's names. So let's go ahead and maybe just say this is John. And he makes, let's just use some numbers here. So 500. And then Sarah, maybe she makes 800. So now when I call it again, it's saying K1's not in there. However, if I call the name Sarah, it now returns that value there. So that's one of the parts that's cool with that is we can kind of decide two things. So typically what you want to look at is by having a key be something you're going to remember and have meaning to it. So we don't just always want to use something, you know, I guess you could say blank from it. Um, we want to have that idea of a key being something we could call upon. So we could make something a little more advanced. So maybe I want to call my advanced stick. And we can go ahead and do a couple different items that we can see. We can do the different variable types we could put in there. So let's go ahead and say my K1. I'm going to go ahead and set it equal to 75. And then maybe my key 2 I want to use a different value type. So let's use a string here of dog. And then to get real fancy, we can go ahead and put inside of this key three, maybe I want to call on a list here. So I'm going to get a whole list of numbers there of 0, 1, 2. And then for another key, let's get about as fancy as we can get with a dictionary. And let's go ahead and put a dictionary inside of a dictionary. So here we can think of it being an inner. And because we're so impressed, let's go say that inner key pairs to the word wow. So that's when you want to make sure you have all your commas in the right spot, as well as those brackets. So please go ahead and make sure you check on that. and We can kind of see each piece of that as well. So if I want to call things from here, so I could say advanced. And let's say I want to call on my key three. I could see it pulls out the list. Something even cooler is if I have a list inside of a dictionary, I can then use indexing on it. 
to pull something out from that list. So I can reference the key and then pull that list. So if you have many lists that you need to keep together, for example, um, maybe sales data, right? So we could have different people as our key names here. And then for each of them, a list of the sales data there. So I could rapidly call on and see how their sales data was progressing for a given time period. So hopefully, if you really want to get cool, you could do a person's name and then create a dictionary of the month that it's in and then reference that with a sub list. Like you can make some really cool multi-level dictionaries, which give you a lot of information at the tips of your fingers. So again, dictionary is something you want to play around with. And this is the general syntax. So if you have this example, you can kind of build a lot off of how that would look. All right, hopefully you have a better understanding now of dictionaries and all the other things we've covered in section four and see the power of dictionaries to really optimize the way you and your company store and access your data. Thanks for learning. 